Content presented on the following podcast is for information purposes only. The views and opinion expressed from host and caregivers are solely given based on the experiences of the individuals involved. Because each person is so unique, always consult your physician, physical or occupational therapist, or medical and fitness advice. Are you struggling to help your aging parents or disabled spouse to do everyday personal care tasks? Are you concerned about them falling or you injuring yourself? What is the task that is so difficult for you to help them to do? You are not alone. We can help. Call in and tell us your challenge. Here, you can receive practical tips and strategies from an occupational therapist and from other caregivers like yourself. And here is your host, Consuela Marshall. Hello, I'm Consuela and I'm an occupational therapist. And on this podcast, you get to learn about your role as a caregiver. You get to embrace your limitations, learn how to best provide for the needs of your loved one in a safe and efficient manner. And you get to know that you're not alone. Look, every caregiving story is so different. And it's you who get to write that caregiving story for your life. You get to learn how to take care of your loved ones. You get to learn how to accept that you cannot do it all. And you get to learn what to let go. And you get to learn how to what to pick back up. How to pick back up your life. How to walk in tune with your life while also caring for your loved one. Look, I believe you can still find a way of taking care of your loved ones while also taking care of yourself. So stay tuned. We've got some caregiving to talk about. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Caregivers Finding a Foothold. And it's the podcast for you. The podcast helps to inspire you to make those changes in your life, in the way that you're providing care to your loved ones that allows you to better care for them in a way that also supports the needs that you also have in your life. So thanks for tuning in. And on today's podcast, this is a podcast related to a caregiver question. So there will be podcasts that are related to just issues that arise in caregiving. And there are also the episodes of the podcast that address your targeted issues. Those things that you call in and you tell a little scenario, and then I address that concern on the podcast. So if you have a concern related to caregiving, and you want to know, is there an easier or safer way to do that? Or, hmm, I wonder how other people handle this situation. Look, call that in and leave that voicemail, and I will address your concern in an upcoming podcast. So let's get started and jump right in today, because there was a call that came in from a Victoria. Victoria called in because she has a mom who doesn't take well to change. Her mom is having a lot of physical limitations in that her knees are bad. She says the doctor says her knees are bone on bone. Her mom has a hard time standing and it is very difficult to take steps with a walker and her mom is wheelchair confined. So she requires a lot of assistance from Victoria who lives with her mom. And Victoria said it's getting very hard to do certain tasks and yet mom doesn't want to change the layout of her bedroom that will allow her to just do things easier. And she wanted to know how I would approach that. So look, I, thank you for that question. And look, it's a common question when our parents or those who are advanced in age, the elderly do not want to make changes in our life because things have been a certain way a long time. And it's hard for them to accept those changes. And in Victoria's situation, she mentioned that mom has a bedroom with a queen size bed, a big dresser, a chest of drawers, and just other furnishings in the bedroom. So the way she described it is mom has a queen size bed and there's a big headboard and there's a footboard and there's just not enough room for a wheelchair to go down the side of the bed. And in the past, it's not been a big problem because mom could stand and hold on to the dresser and hold on to the bed and walk between this maybe 18 inches of space to get to where she can sit down on the bed to lie down. And on the opposite side of the bed is the bathroom door, which mom in previous times was able to stand at her walker at the foot of the bed and then sidestep and walk and get into the bathroom. And over time, daughter has had to help her a little bit more with that. And now 
it's at the point where mom has a lot of difficulty with walking and now daughter must help her to stand and take those steps to where she can sit down on the bed to lie down and she must help mom with the walker as they make it into the bathroom and this has to happen several times a day she's mentioned to mom that mom needs to get rid of the bedroom suit that is too big it's taking up a lot of space and mom has said no and she wanted to know what to do thank you for the question victoria and i I see it a lot. And I want to start by saying there are remedies to this and there are ways to make things easier on you. And you're right. If the layout of the room was reconfigured in some kind of way, it would take a lot of the stress off of you, off of you. And as an aging in place specialist and a fall prevention specialist, on top of just being an OT, I have a lot of scenarios that do come to my mind but before making any of those recommendations i just want to start by saying and this is something i had to learn and this a lot of this learning came after i became the caregiver to my mom that i can have a lot of good recommendations in my head but if they don't fit what a person is receptive to doing then they're just all good ideas and they may not happen or they may happen too late so I'm gonna start by saying that. So with every recommendation that I make, I, I'm always gonna say, you know your parent, you know the history they have, you know what type of personality that they have, you know if they're strong-willed, if they are very aggressive if you make recommendations or if they're really passive-aggressive, meaning they'll say something to you one way and then they'll tell everybody else a different version of, what they're telling you and then nothing gets done you know your parent and also you've got to know yourself in this situation and what was your relationship like with that parent and what are your tendencies do you tend to be too aggressive or are you just not really willing to make any compromises in any of the changes that you want to propose all of that has to be taken into consideration but before i make those recommendations let's just talk about why your mom may not be receptive so let's let's talk about that it could be you know, just that sentimental attachment i know my mom was sentimentally attached to everything and it was it was quite a challenge for her to let go of things. So you want to look at, is it a sentimental thing? And they just, you know, they just get attached to their, their things and actually seeing that bedroom as an extension of them, because maybe they've had that bedroom suit for 30 years and they have a lot of memories attached to it. Is it that they're just a fear of change? It's just, it's difficult. And them knowing how that new setup is going to work. And they're like, they, at least they know this doesn't work and they're figuring out how to do it. And they're like, in their mind, they may be thinking, if I do this, I don't know, that may not work. And what if this and this, and it's just that fear of change and maybe that's it. Or maybe it's just that, even just that lack of awareness that this needs to be done. They really don't know how risky this behavior is. But I have a feeling in this situation, mom knows what Victoria said, I mentioned it to her that she's gonna fall or, I'm hurting my back and I, we can't continue to do all of this. And let's talk about the financial thing. If you start talking about, I want to get rid of this and everything, but what, what if I have to buy something else? And they, they, they're thinking about this financial cost that may be associated with that. And then now they are just sort of resistant to making any of the changes. And the last thing I want to talk about is maybe just, it's just pride. And they may think if I change this bedroom, it's going to be a sign that I have weaknesses and deb debility, and I'm no longer able to live up to where I used to be in my life. And it's that pride and that independence that make them reluctant to make those changes in their house. So in knowing that those may be some of the barriers that you have to get through, then you want to know how, how do you approach it? How do you get through these barriers that may be the reason why your mom doesn't want to change her bedroom? What you want to do is that education to them, educating them and communicating to them 
what the real deal is, just in real layman's terms, like in the trenches terms of, Ma, if we continue to do it this way, my back is killing me. I am taking pain pills. I have been to the doctor and the doctor's already mentioning things that are going on in my back that they're going to get worse if I continue to have to lift so many times. So you want to communicate to them the concerns that you're having. And then gradual, going in and saying, we need to get rid of this whole bedroom suit. This bed is too big. The dresser's too big. The, the chest, chest of drawers is just, you don't need it. You don't use them. That might be the case. But when you go in like a bulldozer and you want to just undo the whole room, then the resistance may come up. So you really want to approach the conversation gradual. And this is where I'm going to start to insert some of the recommendations I would make. What you really want to do is take a gradual approach and just really being practical in a sense, what we need to do is free up more space in this room. We need to come up with some space that allows your wheelchair to get closer to the bed so that it's not so difficult on me and it's not so difficult on you. And so how can we approach that? So options that I can, I will present are not saying whole room overhaul, but if they're receptive to that and you're like, look, I want to get your brand new bedroom suit. And while we're here, we may paint the walls or we're just going to get you something new and we'll just get new comforters. And maybe they are open to that, making it a fun thing. It may be something that they may be receptive to or being receptive to being gifted by someone that could be something new and fresh for them. Otherwise, the options would be either getting a smaller bed and that will free up some space. And the other one is getting rid of getting rid of some of the furniture that's in the room other than the bed and repositioning the bed. So let's talk about the queen size bed that she has another bed which could be twin or full so if you're going to go from a queen size bed to a twin size bed you're going to gain a lot of floor space so you'll be able to position that bed in a way that allows for the wheelchair to get onto both sides of the bed easily and it might even allow for that space for them her to go directly into the bathroom if there's not other obstructions at the foot of the bed that's going to allow the wheelchair to go around the bed so reducing the size of the bed might be the best option look and if they're open to a hospital bed that can be even better but it may be a big stretch for them from going from a regular bed to a hospital bed and there's a, definitely some psychological things some hurdles there that you have to go over when some people really think negatively about hospital beds Okay, the other thing, if the bed stays the same, then let's get rid of some of the dressers in the room. If you can remove the big long dresser that has the mirror and the nine drawers that you described, that frees up a lot of space on a long wall that now the current bed can be pushed over against that wall. That will give you those like 18 inches in space where she could walk between and the, the width of the dresser. So if the dresser is another 18 inches in depth, one foot to 18 inches in depth, and the 18 inches in that space where she used to walk between, we're talking about another 36 inches in space. That is enough space that is going to allow for access into the bathroom. So if that dresser is moved from one side of the bed and that bed is pushed against the wall, that opens up a lot of space to go toward the bathroom side of the bed and now she's going to have to sleep on the side of the bed that's closest to the bathroom and so there's a lot of benefits to that too so just removing a dresser so locating a different a place to put a dresser in the home if she doesn't want it part ways with it or getting her to agree to donate it somewhere so that's that's a way of gradually introducing the change is not getting rid of everything, just choosing things that she can be more in agreement with. And with that is that getting input from them.
giving them opportunity to have input into the decision making. So once we're we're narrowing down what are some of the things that are possibilities, I mean, that's including them. You're getting them involved in that process. You're just not mandating, get rid of this and this bed is old. And I remember this bed when I was in high school, I was in elementary school. It's true, but that's not what they need to hear at the moment. So if you can just get them involved in that, that decision-making process, and then the next thing is making it gradual on the changes and giving them time to process this. But then if things are still not happening, then it might be a chance, might be the opportunity to get someone else to talk to them, that outside support from someone else. Who can help you communicate this to your loved one? Who is it that they have a, a rapport with, that they trust? It could it be a professional, a home health therapist that can come in, an OT or PT that can come in and, and, and talk to them? Is it their a friend who can share an experience of where they had a similar challenge in caring for their parent and some of the changes that their parent may have made and it resulted in their parent being more independent and even being able to stay in their home a lot longer. So sometimes having someone else that can come in and talk to them about these issues is really what you need when they're not receptive to you. Because if, if there is issues with pain and you're in the inability to continue because if you're not able to continue, guess what? Who else is coming in to help? And maybe it might be the time for someone else to come in to help that can do all the transfers. And it might be that chance to really broaden the ideal of having more people on your care team that are assisting you with that. But until that happens, you really gotta continue to make the momentum toward making those changes that involve you and getting her to see that the changes that are being proposed are for your benefit and can even allow her to be more independent. So this could be a win-win situation for you and her. So that should round it up on the recommendations that I can offer today. I hope you can filter something in there that can help you better understand where your loved one is and also understand your needs as well as, yes, these changes need to happen. I am a believer that your mom still has the ability to make choices, that we can't make anybody do anything, but we do have the right rather to say we can continue to participate. So as long as they can make decisions for themselves and can still do things for themselves, it's hard to stand back and look when you know there's an easier way and you know there's a safer way, but that parent is insistent on doing things a certain way. We wish we could control, but we don't have that control. But when there, there are things that they can't participate fully in that task by themselves and it requires your help but in you being required to help them is hurting you, you have the right to say no. So what does no mean if she doesn't want to change the bedroom? Is it time to hire a caregiver, but she can't afford to hire a caregiver? Well, let's have some family discussions and see and let everybody know what are the decisions that need to be made. If she can't hire caregivers and you're no longer able to safely do it, then what are some even tougher decisions if no one can come into the home to help? What are other options in the way of having her needs met outside of staying or remaining in her home? That's a tough situation. And sometimes when you're getting to that point, other people can step up to the bat and offer to help or your loved one may be at that point willing to make those those changes that are needed to be made to keep them safe and you safe tough situation victoria i've, I've lived it and though i'm sure of uh, the listeners can identify with you on some level on trying to get a parent to make some changes that's going to benefit you and take some of the load off of you as the caregiver so thanks everyone for tuning in to this podcast if you have a question please visit the website and leave a message a voicemail and i will be addressing your call on an upcoming podcast so thanks for tuning in today and thank you for being a caregiver see you next time thank you for tuning in to this episode of caregivers finding a foothold we hope you found information that was useful and encouraging to you and we want to invite you to visit the website findingafoothold.com 
and look at the resources that are available to you there. And also, we encourage you to follow us on our social media accounts, findingafoothold.com, on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. And thank you so much for being a caregiver. And our desire is that you find your foothold in caregiving. Thank you so much. And we'll see you again on next episode. Take care.